So we're continuing with three-dimensional figures from yesterday. Uh, we're going to look at a very specific three-dimensional figure. Okay. Uh, prisms. Now, prisms can take on a lot of different shapes. You've used them for a long time. Uh, this is an example of a prism, right? The closest one I have to me. Rectangular prism. Uh, but we have a, a formal definition for a prism here. It's a solid figure, so three dimensions, whose bases have the same size and shape. Now, for this prism, you may notice that uh, this is the same as this, right? And this side is the same as this side, and this is the same as this. So I could actually take any of those three to be my base. It doesn't matter for a rectangular prism. I could set it like that, or I could set it like that, or I could set it like that. Okay? Most figures, you don't have that as a problem. It could be uh, you have one particular base where they're the exact same size and the same shape. Okay? The bases must be parallel to each other. So notice if I call this my base, then this is parallel to this. Okay? And the other sides are all parallelograms. Now, what shape is this side right here? Rectangle. Is a rectangle a parallelogram? Yes. Yes. A rectangle is a parallelogram with right angles. So that fits our definition. It's a parallelogram. Okay. So we're going to start by drawing a simple triangular prism. So yeah, everyone has a ruler. So use your ruler to draw a triangle. I don't care how big you're using the ruler for a straight edge, not for measuring. Okay. And the trick to drawing prisms is after you've drawn one of your bases, you just bring, from each vertex, you bring a line straight down. And it doesn't particularly matter how long the line is at first. And the way you make it look three-dimensional is parallel lines. Okay, so what we want to do is this line right here is at this angle. I want to draw a line from this side to this that's parallel to that. So I'm going to draw a line like that. Okay, so notice how this is parallel to that. Then I do the same from that point. I go parallel, and so I'm going to draw a line that's parallel. Now with a ruler, that's much easier, and not on the smart board, it's even easier. Okay. And then we just erase our leftover. Nope. You're holding a big one. Well, yeah, I have an eraser, but not one. And so we have a prism. Now, um, mine doesn't look perfect because, again, the smartboard's kind of a pain, but. Now keep in mind, there's actually another edge we can't see, so we usually use dotted lines for that, so we can draw this edge along there. And so I've got my three-dimensional figure, my prism. Okay. All right, now, uh, prisms have a lot of different components, okay? And we have these associated terms for those components. So first off, the base. Well, there's two bases, actually, for every prism. There's exactly two bases. So you can't have like three bases in a prism. There's exactly two. So if you're not sure what the base is of your given prism, if it's just floating in space or if it's on a table weird, you figure out which there's two, which which shape there's two of, and you say, oh, that must be my base. Okay, so in this case we've got a base here and a base here. Now don't get base confused with bottom. Okay, a lot of times we think of the base of something as the bottom of it. But that's not necessarily true, because I can take this figure and rotate it around and stuff like that. So it's not necessarily on the bottom. Okay? So we have our bases. Lateral faces. Well, lateral is, um, you think about like in football. If they throw a lateral, what does that mean? Like, throw a sideways, right? Well, lateral is the sides of our figure. So we have lateral faces. These are our sides. So there's a lateral face. There's a lateral face. And there's a lateral face we can't even see that's behind here. Right? So there's three lateral faces. And every prism will have three or more lateral faces. Okay? Now, the lateral area is what we get when we add up the areas of all the lateral faces. It's the sum of the areas of lateral faces. So we get the areas of, those, in this case, three faces and add them up. Okay? The total surface area is the lateral area, so all the faces added together, plus the area of the bases, so the top and bottom. So we call that the total surface area. Okay? Base edges. Well, those are the edges that form the base. So there's a base edge, there's a base edge, there's one we can't see that's a base edge, there's a base edge, there's a base edge, and there's a base edge. So in this case, there's six base edges. Okay. Lateral edges, well, those would be the, the, the edges that are part of the lateral bases. 
So there's a lateral edge, there's a lateral edge, there's a lateral edge, and there's a lateral edge. Now you may notice that the lateral edge, there's a lateral edge here that's actually part of our base. In fact, that's going to be true for all of our base edges. Our base edges are all also lateral edges, okay? but not all of the lateral edges are base edges. And then finally, we have a volume formula here. So to find the volume of any prism, we're going to, we're not going to do this today. We'll do it tomorrow. But we get the area of the base, and we multiply it by the distance between the bases, which we just call the height. So that distance we call the height. Are you on the job? Um, I don't know. We remember that's the height. Then write it down. Okay. So today we're not going to be finding volume. We're not going to be finding surface area. That's coming up. All we're going to be doing today is identifying the parts of the prism. So the different edges, the base edges and the lateral edges, the bases, the lateral faces, because we need to have a common vocabulary uh, so that when we're asked to actually find the volume or the surface area, we know what we're. Okay, so here's our first example. We want to label the visible base edges, the visible base, and the visible lateral edges. Now, I don't want to write out these words every time. So visible base edge, I'm just going to write VBE. And for visible lateral edges, I'm going to write VLE. And for the visible base, well, I'm just going to label it base. There's only one of them that we can see. Now, the word visible means we can see it. And in fact, we can see it from this perspective, okay? So we can't see these dotted lines. They're there, but we can't see them. They're behind the figure, okay? So just to be clear. So if we want to find the visible base, well, it's kind of unclear what the base is. I mean, it's a rectangular prism, so there's, well, we've got the top and bottom here are both parallel and the same, and the right and left are parallel and the same, and the front and back are parallel and the same. So we could actually call any of them the base. So I'm going to call, I'm choosing this, um, I'm going to call this front rectangle, I'm going to call that the base. So shade that in with your pencil, lightly, not dark. Okay, so I want to shade it in lightly. Okay. And we're going to label that this is our base, what we shaded in. Okay. We got that shaded in lightly, and that we're calling the base. Okay, this, this face that's towards us, I'm calling that the base. That's not the only possible base, it's the one I'm choosing on this problem to call the base. Okay. Um, what about visible base edges? Well, on the front, which is the base, we can see all four edges. So all four of these are visible base edges. So we'll call it visible base edge, visible base edge, visible base edge, and visible base edge. Uh, we also, let's see, what else, what other base edges can we see? Because, I mean, we have the front, we can also see the back, top, and right. So we have a visible base edge here, and a visible base edge here. Can we see any other base edges? Are there any other base edges that are visible? Uh, this one? These are, so this is not part of the base, this is part of the side. And so that's going to be visible lateral edges. So we have a visible lateral edge over here. And then this one right, this one up here is also a visible lateral edge. This one down here is a visible lateral edge. Huh? Oh, and uh, what about that bottom one? The, 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 the Good. And so then if we really want to get picky, we would go, well, this is also a lateral edge. So this is a VLE. And so on. In fact, all of the base edges are also lateral edges. You think about how the base connects to the sides. So all the base edges are lateral edges. I'm not going to label all of the VBEs VLE as well. Just keep that in mind. If it's a visible base edge, it's also a visible. It's also a lateral edge that we can see. Okay. Now this seems kind of weird to even bother labeling, but the idea here is if we can figure out which parts make up the lateral surfaces and which ones make up the base, then whenever we go to find the volume then we don't get confused with those lateral. We don't care about the lateral, we care about the base. And when we go to find the surface area, we're not gonna necessarily care about the base, we're gonna want the lateral. So kind of differentiating what we're looking at is important. And if we start now 
When we start applying it, it'll be a little bit easier. That's all. So now we're going to take this isometric view, right, three-dimensional view, I'm going to make a net out of it. Okay, so in example two, we're going to draw a net for this figure. Now we're going to stick with the same base. This, where points A and B are, which, you know, they're kind of labeled A and B, that's our base, okay? So to draw my net, I'm going to start by drawing my base, which is just a rectangle. Okay, so there's, and again, keep in mind, that's the, this right here is the base, and that's facing us, okay? So I can make this really easy on myself by imagining squishing this box into the paper. And everything just kind of has to unfold to, to make room so it goes straight down. So if I squish this straight down, well, my right side over here, these are going to come out, right? They're going to come out over here. And my left side, well, that's going to come out over here to the left. draw this a little bit better here. Okay. Let's see, if I squish that, then I've got, well, I've got the top, right? That could come up. And I've got the bottom. Okay. Well, the back, I need that to fold out somehow. So I need to decide where I want that back to go. Keep in mind, I could keep it attached to any of these sides, no problem. I'm going to decide to keep it attached to the bottom. So there's the back. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, notice point A and point B. Well, this was point A, this was point B. So I'm just going to label those again, A and B, just so we kind of have a frame of reference. So this says draw the net and then label the visible lateral faces. So I'm going to call those VLF faces. Visible base edges, so that's VBEs. Visible lateral edges, VLEs, and then both bases, which I'll just call base. So we already know our base, one of the bases is definitely right here. Where is the other base? Um, it's the last one. It's the last one. So if this is our base, then the, that's reverse. So this is our base. Okay. Let's see here. Visible lateral faces. So that, those would be the, the sides that we can see. Well, we can see this one on the right. So that would correspond with this one on the right. So this is a visible lateral face. Are there any other faces that we can see? Any lateral faces we can um, see? A, a. Bases. Okay, the one between the bases. So we can, can we see this one? A, the, yes. Where does this go? The top. Uh, right. no. So based on the way that I talked through unfolding it, this is the bottom, bottom. right? This is down here. Can we see that? Oh. No. We can see the top one, which again, the way that I've talked through it, that would be up here. All right, so V, L, F. Okay. Do we see any of the other lateral faces? Can we see the left side? Can we see the bottom? No, okay. All right, so that's it. Okay, visible base edges. So base edges, well, uh, if we think back to this previous picture, we already kind of labeled all of them. Now it's just a matter of translating the isometric view to the, to the net. So we had, we know we had five visible base edges that we could see. So let's think through those. So we can see all four on the front. So I've got visible base edge, visible base edge, visible base edge, visible base edge. Okay. Notice those are all sides on the base, right? And we had two on the other base that we could see, which were the top. Think about where the top would go. We folded this back up. Where is, what is this right there going to be on this face? Well, it's going to be down here. Yeah. Right? Because if we fold that back up, that's going to come all the way around and reach back up to the top. So we've got a visible base edge down here. And then we've got this side, which would correspond with where this one meets. So we have a visible base edge there. Okay. So we have our five six visible base edges. Okay. Do we have six on the other one? I just can't count? Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, we have six. I just can't count. Okay, cool. Okay, let's see here. What else? Okay, so we've got all our visible base edges. Now we have visible lateral edges. So we have this right here, right, which would correspond with the top left up here. So that's a visible lateral edge. But it also correspond with this right here, where they meet. All right, so this is actually also a visible lateral edge. 
we have this side, which would correspond with this side, so that's a visible lateral edge, but it's really where those two meet, so that's a visible lateral edge. All right. We have um, this side, which was part of the base, but it's really where the base and this edge meet. So this is also a, it's a base edge and a lateral edge. Don't see anything else? No. What about this right here? Where is that going to be? That would be on right here off this side, right? So that's a visible lateral edge. And where the bottom meets it, that's a visible lateral edge. Right. So on the net, it appears we can see, you know, we have more labeled than in our three-dimensional figure. But the reality is it's because these rectangles meet up to form the three-dimensional figure. And so every time we have one, like, lateral edge, we really have two things over here labeled. Every time we have a base edge, we really have two things over here labeled because the edge is formed by the sides meeting up. That's what makes the edge. Okay. All right, let's do another labeling. We've got a triangular prism here. I call it triangular because, well, it's got triangles. So notice here, there's only one shape that shows up exactly twice. Right? And that's the triangles. The triangles, the top and bottom. Okay, so those must be our bases. So let's go ahead and label our bases. We still want visible base edges, and we still want visible lateral edges. Okay. Can we see the other base in this triangular prism? No. no, it's on the ground, right? Okay. So let's see here. But we can see these visible base edges. Right? These, we can see these base edges, other. So visible base edge, visible base edge, visible base edge. And we can see these base edges, so they're visible. And then lateral edges that are visible. Well, we can see this one. That's a lateral edge that's visible, so a visible lateral edge. This is a lateral edge. And this is a lateral edge. Okay. Now, again, keep in mind, all of the base edges... Because when I talk about the lateral bases, it's really this whole thing, right? The base edges and the lateral edges are, are in common. They share that side. That's what's making it three-dimensional. And so anytime I label a base edge, it's really also a lateral edge. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw a net. Let's think about this for a second. Um, last time I started by drawing the base. Uh, this time I don't think I'm going to do that because it might be challenging. So, but we have this rectangle here that if I put that flat, then I could unfold this thing, right? Let's put that flat so we have a rectangle. Right. And notice that that's really, that's point A and B. Right? There's A and there's B. And then if I unfold this, well, this side's going to be a rectangle. The left side is going to be a rectangle. Right. And then the bases are going to be kind of folded up in a way, folded up and down, so we have two triangles. Triangle and a triangle. All right. So we're going to label again. So let's see here. What The bases we already know are triangles, so let's go ahead and label those bases. So base and base. And we want visible lateral faces. So which, how many, how many lateral faces can we actually see? So think about it. If we actually had this in, as, a, as a physical object, we, we got a 3D printer and we made this thing out of wax. So not see first, out of wax. How many could we see? Well, we'd see this one. We'd see this one. Could we see the back one? No. No. So that's not, a, that's not visible. These left and right are. So we have a visible lateral face and a visible lateral face. Okay. The back one is a lateral face, but we can't see it. We, have, we, we know it's there, but we can't see it. Okay. So for the base edges, well, we can see, we already labeled, we can see all three on the top, and we can see two on the bottom. 
So let's figure out which ones apply. So the top one we can see all three. So visible uh, base edge, visible base edge, visible base edge. Now on the bottom one, which, which ones correspond to the two that we can see? So this one's coming out, this is coming out. So it must be these two. So we have a visible base edge here and a visible base edge here. Notice we can't really, in three dimensions, we can't see this back one. It's that dotted line. Okay. Let's see here. Lateral edges now. Well, we had we had three lateral edges when we um, drew it that way. Let's think about which ones we can see. Well, we can see this one coming down from B, right? So that means we can see this, this kind of seam right here, right? So this is a visible lateral edge. We could also see the one coming down from A. So that's a visible lateral edge. And then we can see where the two meet up, right? Which would be, well, the end of this one, but also this one. Now again, the goal here is to get in the habit of being able to translate the different parts of the isometric view to the net view. And that's not easy to do, especially if you have a really complex demo or something. Good, good observation. So we have this side right here would correspond with this side over here. So that's actually a visible base or lateral, however you want to call it, right? So we could call it a visible base edge. And this is also a visible base edge, very good catch. And on the bottom too, very good. So we can actually see these too. So visible base edge and visible base edge. Sure. So the goal is to be able to translate from the isometric view to the, the um, two-dimensional net view and know which parts kind of correspond with each other. Now, my, my next question is, if we didn't have this drawing like this, if we didn't have this drawing at all, could we label all of these parts as visible base edges, visible lateral edges, visible faces, and so on? Okay, why? Or think about how. Okay, so we could actually see how it folds up. Would we know what's visible if we didn't have that drawing? Why not? Okay, so let's, here's my prism, okay? Which side is not visible to you right now? The other side. The back. The back, the back side? Bottom. Which side is not visible the to top, you? The top, the top side. And the back. It's not. Which side is not visible to you now? Back. The back. What about the now? The side. So does how I have a pacing affect what we would label as visible or not visible? Yes. Sure. Yes. So without knowing the orientation of our object, we really can't talk about visibility. We can still talk about, we know it's there. We know that face is there. We wouldn't have to talk about if it's visible or not. Okay, so remember, visible is literally that. Can you see it? So if we don't have this three-dimensional isometric view, we really can't talk about visible or, in, or not visible. Okay? But that's okay, because we really don't, in a, we don't really care if it's visible or not in reality when we're trying to do stuff. We know it's there. We don't actually even see it. The goal of this is to be able to translate what we see here to this. So we make that connection. Again, that's not obvious and it's not easy. Um, on the star test a couple years ago, the one they released, there's actually a question that had um, an icosahedron. And, uh, which is a 20-sided figure. Okay, all triangles, and it was the net of the icosahedron, and you had to talk about part of it. So if you had never done something like this, which is fairly simple, take a 20-sided figure and draw its net and try to talk about specific parts, it becomes impossible. Okay, so we're practicing with small figures so we can kind of expand that and make bigger and bigger figures. Okay, now the naming. Okay, we name our polygons based on their bases. No pun intended, okay? So we name the polygon depending on the base. So as soon as you know its name, you know the shape of the base. So the first one we saw in example one, what was the shape of the base? A rectangle. So we call it a either a rectangle base prism or a rectangular prism. On example three, what was the shape of the base? 
In triangles, we either call it a triangle face prism or a triangular prism. If we had a prism with a hexagon as the base, we call it a hexagonal prism. If we had a prism with a 20-sided base, we call it a 20-gonal prism or a 20-gun base prism. Okay? Which, by the way, is not what I meant by an icosahedron, but just be clear. So, uh, an intact prism shown, well, number one was a rectangular prism. And again, you may see this written, or you may think of it also as a rectangle-based prism. Okay. In other words, sometimes, uh, think about like a square. If you have a prism with the base of a square, would you call that a squarer-based prism? Or a squarer prism? No, you just call it a square-based prism. Okay. Triangle, well, we can say triangular, and that takes on that meaning, so triangular prism. Or we can just call it a triangle-based prism. So when in doubt, if you're not sure what to call it, figure out the shape of the base, and then you just call it that polygon name based prism. No confusion to be left there. Okay. The last thing for today is just a, a side note almost. There's actually two different families of prisms, I guess you could say. One of them, which is the one we're going to be primarily using, is called a right prism. Okay? Not because it's correct, but because of right angles. A right prism is a prism where the base and the edges are perpendicular. So that's what you're used to seeing. Your, you know, your water bottles or your soda cans or your Pringles things or table, the top of the table, boxes. These are all right prisms. Okay. There's actually also another type of prism called an oblique prism, which looks kind of like this. It's, it's leaning over. Okay. In other words, this angle right here isn't 90 degrees. It's some other angle. We call those oblique prisms. Um, we're not going to worry too much about oblique prisms, but there is a useful little note right here. If we have a right prism and an oblique prism, in other words, a straight up and down one and one that's been tilted over, as long as they have the same area for their base and the same height, they actually have the exact same volume. So tilting over doesn't change the volume, which is, if you, if you get a slinky and you play with it, it, it kind of makes sense, but I wouldn't say it's obvious. Um, and we'll talk a little about, about Cavalieri's principle um, another day. But again, use that, that volume formula. We're not going to use it today, but we'll use it tomorrow. So look at your assignment. So each of these problems, it basically has two parts. You can do it that way. You have your picture given already. You're going to label all the stuff like we did. You've got your visible base edges, we'll call those VBE, your visible base, which you can just label base, the visible lateral edge, which we'll call VLE, and then the one thing that I'm asking for that wasn't in the, the practice is you're going to give the name of the prism. Okay, you're going to name it. Once you finish that, then the next part is to draw the net. So you're going to draw a net, and then you'll do the, basically the same thing. Visible lateral faces, visible base edges, visible lateral edges, and then both faces, we just call base. Okay? Questions or concerns about what you should be doing right now? All right. Do I get started?